In this example, I want to go ahead and expand on our API a little bit. So right now, the way our API works with this get request is it's going to scan our entire baseball stats table and give me all of the baseball stats. So it's going to give me all the players and all the teams and all of the games. Um, if I look at this Lambda function, which I have here, Dynamo Filter, um, what it does is it actually, um, if I scroll down a little bit, um, it takes an input parameter from the event, which is the object type, and it's looking for a um, team ID that begins with whatever that object type is. So the idea behind this would be I would be able to filter for teams or games or players. Um, and that, to go further, I can basically filter for any team ID that begins with um, a value that I pass in. And that value that I pass in is going to come from the event object's object type. Okay. So what I want to do is over here in um, API Gateway, the way I want this to work is I want to be able to look at the URL, so I want to be able to go to Baseball Stats, and then I want to be able to say that I'm looking for player records, or game records, or team records. Okay, so I want to be able to pass that object, and I actually want it to be a, a URL parameter. Okay, so I want that to be part of the URL. And the way I'm going to do that is um, you'll see that I am not able to create a new HTTP GET method. So HTTP GET is not an option. And the reason for that is if I go back to resources, I can't map GET to two different places. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to create a new resource at the root level. And the resource is going to be um, basically a, a URL parameter that I'm going to pass in, which is the object type. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a resource. I'm going to call my resource name just type. Okay, so that's the variable name that I want to use when you're referring to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create that resource. And then when I have that resource, I can create a method underneath it, which is going to be my get method that I'm going to map to my filter. So here's my get. I'm going to map it to that filter function, the Dynamo filter. And I'm going to go ahead and create that method. And then what I need to do with this is basically that URL parameter, the type of object that I'm looking for, I then have to pass through to my Lambda function. So my Lambda function, again, is expecting a variable called object type. So the way I'm going to handle that um, is if I go over to API Gateway in the integration request, I'm going to define that in my mapping template. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and edit this. I'm going to edit my mapping template. And in this case, I'm just going to have a generic empty mapping template, so I don't need this. Uh, it's still for JSON data. And we're looking for an object type parameter that's going to end up in my Lambda function. So that's where this attribute comes from. And the value of that object type, I want it to be that URL parameter. So the URL parameter in API Gateway, I just called type. So the way I'm going to get that is I'm going to say dollar sign input dot params, and then in single quotes, the URL parameter name that I used. So I'm just passing the object type. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I should be able to deploy my API. Okay, so now I've deployed the API. And if I look, um, you'll see that that endpoint is a little bit different. So you'll notice that it's expecting that type parameter as an endpoint. So now if I come back over to my browser and I say, I only want to see the team records. And that is basically indicating that the team ID is going to begin with team Right, so you can see that it starts with team. I could use team info, but if I just pass in team, that it, it does begin with team. And you'll notice that I just get the team records. Or if I do just the game records. Or if I just do the player records. What's happening is that URL parameter is getting passed through to my API. 
in the URL and then in the API I'm then forwarding it on to my Lambda function and it's coming through the event as the object type variable. And again if we go back over to um, that um, mapping template we'll see that happening. So I'm just going to the integration request and you can see that I have that mapping template and I'm saying I'm going to take that URL parameter that was passed in by the user as part of the URL. I'm taking that and I'm forwarding it on to my Lambda function as a variable called object type. So that's where the event.object type comes from. If I wanted to call it something else I could certainly do that um, but that's how that mapping template is actually passing that data through. Okay, so that's that's basically how I'm going to use URL parameters. And a lot of times I might use it not necessarily for an object type, but maybe for an object ID. So if I had um, a resource for players, I might be looking for players with a specific ID or games with a specific ID, right? So in the in the URL, then I might have an ID parameter. Okay, and then I would look at not all the records, but a record with that specific ID. Okay, so there's lots of ways to use these URL parameters. Um, and the URL parameters are really good for search engine optimization as opposed to using query string variables. But really this is in place of query string variables.